Uh, just bringing you in another video finally. I haven't done any videos about the Mazak for a few weeks now. I've uh, been pretty busy with customer jobs and, and I still have a fair few uh, to do, but just sort of in the middle now, just sort of jumped in the middle and just trying to get some parts organised uh, for my Mazak at the moment. Uh, just got you pointed at some um, linear tracks and linear slides at the moment and just going through a bit of a thought process. I just thought I'd include you guys in on what I was up to. Um, the parts for the Mazak uh, are very good. As I mentioned before, you can get pretty much um, or over 90% of the parts still ex Japan. Um, the problem is with um, cases where, um, where items go, um, there's a bit of a timeline on some parts. Some parts are available from Mazak, but parts that are sourced outside of Mazak, like these are actual NSK uh, linear slides. And the other brand that they use is um, THK, which are two of the bigger um, bearing companies in Japan. So obviously they don't make everything themselves, just like the same as the car manufacturers, they don't make everything. And they source some of the parts from uh, outside sources. And that'd be the case with um, linear slides and bearings and things like that. Go, They're not all genuine Mazak parts. As I said, they, they um, source them from outside vendors. Um, but these parts are available. Uh, no problem there, uh, not cheap. Um, probably to replace the four linear slides uh, complete um, is probably a, a, um, a shade over 6,000 uh, local money, uh, which is not cheap, but I did I did sort of budget for that. I'm not saying I had the money sitting in the bank waiting to spend that money, but I did budget that in the rebuild of the machine, I did allow that I would be spending X amount of dollars to buy the machine and to rebuild the machine that was already counted in. I'm not saying I'm going to get to $1,000 short of fixing or rebuilding the machine and then cut out and then stop rebuilding it. But, of course, it is uh, hard to budget exactly what it's going to cost. But I've sort of got an estimate of, of where I'll, you know, what money I need to spend on it and what needs to be done on it. Um, but sort of getting back to the uh, linears themselves, um, it's not so much the price as a concern. Obviously, it is. But... Um, if you need something, you have to pay it. And as I, as I mentioned, I already allowed for the fact of, of replacing the linears. We're sort of getting to the point where it come to a bit of a head now with it. Um, what to replace and what not to replace. I was sort of like on the run of just you know, ripping things out and replacing them. And, and it's not a concern so much of the money side of it. I mean, it is, but it's not a, a, a main thought process for deciding what to do. If, stuff, if something needs to be replaced, you, you've got no choice about it. And especially linears, you don't want to be mucking around with those later. Once the machine's assembled, it's a major job to get in and replace linears later. Um, but the timeline to get these parts is um, approximately five to six months, which is um, ridiculous. And the reason for that is they have to be custom made because they're not a standard item. Firstly, the, the bolt sensors um, of the carriage of these carriers is uh, 72 mil, whereas ISO standard for linears is 62. I have found another supplier called Hoewin, which is uh, a Taiwanese company, which make very good uh, linear slides, and you'll probably find those on a lot of your CNC machines. It's more so your smaller machines, probably like 10 horsepower or under, use um, a lot of the Taiwanese type slides, and they're excellent, and I can source those locally, so they have got matching uh, hole centers. The only difference is that they use uh, M8s instead of M12 which are in there at the moment. So what I was planning to do was uh, increase the sizes, um, more than bore them out to uh, M10 at least and um, modify the um, the machine base itself to suit by using a bush just to take up that difference in the bolt size but uh, M8's probably a little bit small for linear size I consider. I mean they're not going to tear off, I mean they're free, they're free flowing but the thing is, is that I'd like to get it at least close to what the original manufacturer have gotten. I don't have the blocks with me at the moment. Um, I was actually on my way out to go and get the uh, linear slides at the moment, and that's why I was thinking to um, do this video, just as I say, bring you on a bit of thought process of where I was up to with the machine, as far as the rebuild goes. And trying to decide what to replace and what not to replace is, is probably the hard thing. I'm, I'm big on just ripping stuff out and just replacing it regardless. And as I mentioned, I'm not, it's not so much the concern of the dollar uh, behind the thinking, but it's more so just the waste um, of, of items. I mean, if these items are still good, I would hate to throw these in the bin just for the sake of my own personal arrogance to say, I'm just going to replace it anyway. And, and I know you guys are going to be saying, what, you're going to throw something away for 6K? Give me 6K, I'll have it. 
but it's not so much about that. As I mentioned, I have budgeted for uh, the rebuild, and what you what you rebuild along the way, what you spend that money on is regardless. So I, I did allow for buying the machine and the rebuild, and the linears are counted into that. So what I don't spend is obviously going to come back to me, and what I don't and what I do spend is obviously going to come out of my pocket. So. But the linears themselves, um, I did want to replace because I thought it was a, a bit of a pain to get into job. So I thought I'll just replace them anyway. And I was going to replace them with the locally sourced uh, high wind uh, linear slides and tracks, or trucks, or what do you want to call them, carriers. But sort of like thinking about the idea of throwing them away. And there is a bit of mod work to do on there as well. You can probably see this combination of bolts on the side here if it's coming out clear enough. They are a little bit dirty. I mean, these are straight off the track. I haven't cleaned these. are straight off the machine. You've got to think this is you know, a 20 year, you know, at least 20 plus years of service this machine's been running for. So, and I haven't cleaned any of these yet. These are just straight off the machine sitting there um, waiting to be cleaned you know, to the next step. Um, but just going through at the moment, um, trying to think what to do with them, to be honest. Um, should I replace them or not? And it is a hard decision. And, and then what I'm doing at the moment is just going through and inspecting the actual linear rails themselves, just seeing for where. The balls themselves are very good. Like, I haven't taken all the balls out yet, but the actual roller balls, I've checked a few of them. You can see a few of them missing out of that space here. They normally would be pretty full. You can see that top one and the bottom one is pretty full. So this should be all full. So I've taken a few of the balls out, measured them just to get a, a random size. And I don't get any variation in the size at all. And the other thing is the condition of the balls. I'm just inspecting them just under a under a um, magnifying glass. I, that's the best I could probably inspect them with, but which is probably enough. You, what you're looking for is just pitting, um, uneven wear, and the size straight away tells you there's probably not going to be any wear. So I did measure them with a micrometer to see if there was any variation. I measured about 10 of them, and that's probably not all of them, but I will measure all of them in one in one of them to see what they're like, just to get a, a, um, an average of what the, the wear and tear is like. And I haven't inspected the actual track inside there, the actual running track inside the block here. That's probably the next thing I've got to look at, is take them out, wash them, and then give them a good clean, um, and give them, take, as I say, disassemble the whole block, Get, get it totally disassembled and just inspect the actual uh, slideways there. And that's the sort of thing you're just going to go through and just look at that. Before I just go say, ah, stuff, I'm just going to replace the linears. Um, and there's not been that much for you guys to look at at the moment, just looking at this linear block and waiting for me to get on to the next part of the video. But I'll, I will pause you and I'll just bring you in a, a linear slide that I've just cleaned up. And it just gives you an idea to think, you know, where the thought process is coming from. You're looking at it and going, oh, you're looking at it and going, that definitely needs to be replaced. But... When you see it, I've cleaned up one side of it. As you guys have seen the motor, I've shown that in stage from clean to dirty. You know, obviously, um, you can see the difference. And you start to think, oh, what's well, worthwhile maybe doing something with them? And, that, and that's what I'm sort of going through the thought process at the moment. I just want to include you guys in on what I'm sort of thinking at the moment, just include you along the way. So what I'll do is I'll get these two lots out of the way. And I'll just bring over another one at the back there, this track that's at the back here, and just give you an idea of what I mean of sort of why I'm sort of having second thoughts about actually just replacing them and just maybe persevere with this track in particular. Now I don't know how well this is going to come out because the camera's not great at picking up the light. I'll just sort of bring you in, I'll bring you on the worst part first obviously. I'll just try and get a bit more light into that camera a little bit, that's hopefully that lightens up a little bit. And you can see that there Straight away when I'm looking at that, I'm just thinking, I'm just going to replace it. So I've just taken these off the machine. They've just been sitting there since I've disassembled the machine. And just thinking, what will I do with it? I'm thinking, ah, I'm just going to replace them. But actually, this is the shorter This is the shorter track of the two. Um, the longer one, which is over the back still, which is a bit hard to get into the camera. So I thought I'd just grab these shorter ones, which will, will be getting replaced anyway with the high wind tracks. This, this is the upper track, I suppose you can say, which is on the, I suppose you call the X axis. And the longer version, which is over the back there, and you can just see the vernies at the top of the screen there, which is the Z axis. So that's running into your chuck. And the one in front of you at the moment is the one running across the face of the chuck. Now on the side here, this is just a lot of dirt that's just sitting there. So it's just accumulated with coolant, oil and things like that. It's obviously flushed down from the track and it's just a lot of dirt. 
But I'll bring you over the other one that I have cleaned up. Uh, I just want to show you this one as an example of, of the before. And I'll show you the other one that I've already started to clean up, the longer version, which I will be keeping. I mean, these might come in handy for a straight edge, so I won't, I won't actually bin these. I'll give these a wash, and they might come in handy for a straight edge. And linear slides are absolutely perfectly straight. Um, and other than any, unless you run them over the truck or something, of course. But, but you know, that's the actual mating surface underneath, so that for it bolts onto the machine itself. And the top doesn't give you much thought to say you know, how bad the top is, but this top area doesn't actually get touched anyway. They, they sit about one mil. The linear slide sits about one mil above this surface, so this area here is not really important. It's these running edges along here, if I can get that in close enough to the camera, this running edge along here where the balls actually run in the linear. And this area down the bottom here cleans up very well, which I'll show you shortly. And this is what the other one looked like before I cleaned it up. And I'm trying to decide what to do because I'm just going to, the only way to sort of check linears, obviously just check for wear. So the actual linear slides is going to be wear and any pitting, scarring, things like that you're looking for really. Any running, any running, uh, bad running along the surface, um, any, as I say, scarring, pitting uh, along the surface itself is, is what you're looking for if you're looking for you know, how to inspect the linear slides. And this isn't a lesson, this is just a... Uh, a staging of the rear build, but um, you know, re rebuilding a machine obviously you need to. If you've got linear slides on the machine, it is a bit of a hard decision. You know, if you've, if you've got noisy linears, it's an easy decision, but this machine wasn't noisy at all. Um, Surprised for its age, I just sort of might have got sort of like when you're a second hand machine, you're sort of thinking people are just going to run it into the ground, but it doesn't seem to be the case in uh, with this machine. And it would be good to talk to that same guy I brought when I bought the machine. The worker that actually ran, he actually he was the only one that ran this machine. And he was very good with information. You know, he was very positive about the machine itself. It was going to be good to talk to him again, but obviously, he's, obviously I can't um, call up people that I don't really know and ask questions. But just sort of trying to bring in, hopefully that's going to come up in the light. Now, what I've done is I've cleaned this one up, okay, so... I'll just flip it over the other side. I don't know how well it's sort of showing up, but you can sort of see this is this is so this is upside down, obviously. So this is where it bolts onto here. My hands are pretty dirty because I've just been cleaning the tracks. I sort of jumped in the middle to show you guys. So at one end there, you can sort of see where all this crud sitting in the track here. Okay, so that's outside the running area. Okay, so that's not so much as as we're coming along. I don't know what that little mark is just there. I just spotted in the track there. I don't know if it. So you guys have seen it pretty much as, as I'm seeing it. As I'm sliding along there, I've just seen a little mark on there. Sorry for the average video, but I just sort of include you guys on everything that I'm up to. And this might be handy bit of information for someone who's got linears and, and I'm in the same boat. We're trying to decide whether, whether to replace them or not. And of course, I'm in the rebuild stage. Um, it is part of the rebuild, but if you've got a running machine, normally linears will get noisy and you replace them for that reason. But this is the other side that I've just cleaned. So that little groove down the bottom there is nothing. So that's actually just where the machine, where it actually bolts onto the machine base. So this is obviously the top, as you're seeing in the screen, and it's the mating surface on the bottom. So I haven't cleaned anything. All I've cleaned is just along one side so I can inspect the actual rail itself. So actually the camera's not a bad one to actually do an inspection, actually better than the better than the magnifying glass. So I was inspecting it with a light and a magnifying glass. So what you're looking for is where on this lower area here where it's running, pushing down on. Not so much in the upper area, but more so in the lower. So obviously that top area is not gonna get much running, but it's more so the weight of the machine is running on this, as I say, this running surface right on the bottom here. Just I've got you up nice and close, haven't I? Actually, that's not a bad way to inspect that. So you can see that along there. What you're looking for is any scarring along that surface, especially that bottom running surface. Apologies for this being a bit of a, a linear learning lesson. It wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be. I'm just trying to just include these guys in on, as I say, a bit of a thought process of where I am with um, rebuilding this machine and where I'm up to. I'm just trying to include you in things along the way. And most people are probably switched off by now because I'm already seeing, I'm already up to the 14 minute mark. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thinking I'll, I'll probably will uh, stick with this one. Uh, it is looking pretty good. 
Um, if anything changes, I'll definitely um, come back in another video and just quickly, or well, part of another video, and let you guys um, see what I'm up to with that. But it was a bit of a concern. I was thinking um, to keep keep these or not keep them, but I can't find any any damage on the bottom here at all. So I just thought, just quick, as I say, I just thought I'd quickly do this video. You know, it wasn't a bit longer than what I would like. I just sort of just show you what I'm up to and just include you, as I say, a bit of thought process of what I'm doing at the moment with my machine and with the linears and so on. So the thing is with it, with uh, buying them uh, from a bit, I can buy these actual blocks, uh, NSK or THK, um, as, a, as a part. But the problem is you've got to drill and tap these holes in here. Now the thing with THK blocks, they're through hardened and they're hardened to in excess of 60 rock wall, so it's pretty tough stuff. But the, TA, the NSK is not so bad, their case hardened down to about half a mil. So once you get through the top surface, you're getting back into, say, maybe along the lines, I don't know what these actually made out of, but they'd be probably around about, under the, under the skin, they'd be approximately being a high carbon steel, they'd probably be about the, probably around about the 40 rock wall, somewhere around there, prior to heat treat, because you'd obviously need a, a certain amount of carbon to be able to uh, heat treat them. And in this case, they'd probably be somewhere, as I guess, around about the 40 to 45 rock wall, which is not too bad. Once you get through that hard layer, which these are, as I say, so these are NSK blocks, but obviously to buy them as a replacement, I'd have to do all these drilling and tapping. These are uh, in the wrong place. So these are, these are 72 mil apart, not 62. So I'd have to um, reconfigure my machine again. It's just you know, it's just a major pain uh, to get it all, uh, get it up and running again. I don't mind doing it, but it's just it's just something I prefer not to do. That's all. Especially I've got my business to run. I can't spend huge amounts of time on this machine. It's not it's not a hobby machine. It's going to be a business machine eventually. But then I'll probably do this video. I didn't want to um, have much. I haven't got much to show to show you guys. Let's just uh, do a video and just go through a bit of. Uh, thought process and where I'm up to um, and just include these guys along the way and, and what I'm doing and, and I'll definitely let you know in, as I say in future videos where I'm, where I'm up to with the news you'll see um, the different lineages as it's going back again and, and I'll just prompt you on you know what I'm doing anyway but I just sort of just quickly include you even though it's a bit of a longer video uh, include you in what I'm up to but that'll probably do for now this is way too long for one of my videos and you guys have already switched off by now anyway and I look forward to see you guys on the next one okay bye for now